Okay, Barry Patterson here with the Life Affirming Niche blog with Jamie Haley of Low Country Local First. Thanks, Jamie, for spending time with us today. My pleasure. Um, if you could, for starters, uh, just give us a little background on how uh, Low Country Local First got started in Charleston mm -hmm. and the relation to the bigger Bali organization. Sure. Um, well, the guy who founded it, Matt Bauer, had mm -hmm. gone to a Bali conference in 2006 okay. and thought, wow, this is great. You know, Charleston's sort of a vacuum for an organization like this. Mm -hmm. And um, I happened to meet him, started off on the steering committee. It was sort of, you know, everything that they were doing and talking about sort of encompassed all of my um, values without me realizing that there was a platform for it. So um, mm -hmm. I was immediately on board and um, was sort of winding down my own business at the time and they asked if I would be the director and so here I am almost four years later. Oh, wonderful. So it's yeah. been four years? Yeah. Can you, I guess, go through the growth a little over the last four years? Yeah, well, um, we started off, um, you know, just as a small steering committee of mostly actually nonprofit leaders and um, a few business folks and um, we've grown to, oh, about 350 members now Fantastic. and um, we have a, a really strong by local campaign where we've mm -hmm. gotten a lot of recognition we have a lot of press around that we've really seen a shift in purchasing mm -hmm. from the community and we have a really great sustainable agriculture initiative where we are training the next generation of farmers and food system leaders mm -hmm. um, we have a small online market that we run that connects uh, farmers with the restaurant community okay. and then we do a lot of awareness around why support local agriculture oh fantastic we, you, you mentioned the the shift could you go a little bit into the 10 percent shift and sure. what are some of the uh, some of the real numbers and the projected numbers of what it could mean well um the 10 percent shift really kind of was birthed from uh, from Michigan, okay. which is where they had done a study on what this 10% shift of what our annual budget is okay. to local could be. And um, here in our Tri-County area, if we shifted 10% of our annual budget from non-local businesses to local independent businesses, we could create $140 million in new economic activity, $15 million in new wages, and 1,600 new jobs. So that's incredible. That seems like a pretty simple thing to implement, don't you think? It really does. Yeah. So, but is it? It's anywhere from you know, where do you have your mortgage? You yeah. know, where? So, where are you doing your banking? Where are you buying your groceries? Where do you buy your clothes? Your office supplies? All those kind of things. So, we're trying to make the process of making that shift mm -hmm. a little bit easier for folks. Okay, and I know part of that process, you publish a. a Directory. A directory mm -hmm. listing of yeah, the businesses, right. but people can also find them on the website. Yes, absolutely. So we have a website, lowcountrylocalfirst.org, and um, that's really the most current listing because anytime anybody signs up, they immediately get put onto that website, and then the directory gets published once a year. Okay, wonderful. I know I have the last two. <laughs> uh -huh. um, could you give us a little idea of a, of a definition of local living economy? I mean, you may have just described it, but... Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting because I'm working with uh, with Bali nationally on a community of practice right now. About 12 of, us, 12 of us have been coming together every other month for the last six months. We're going to be doing okay. that. And um, the, the idea of this local living economy keeps coming up because oftentimes people don't understand what that means. It's very right. esoteric. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, to me, a local living economy, and I think to the whole group, it means an economy that is good for the community, mm -hmm. it's good for the environment, it mm -hmm. creates good jobs, and so that you know that is a, a living economy, one that can sustain itself. Mm -hmm. When I think living, I think vibrant. Right, So it's active exactly. and a lot of... And that's the word I think that we need to start substituting, is okay. creating a vibrant economy. Okay, a vi vibrant local economy. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, you mentioned um, the uh, the working with the farmers. Is that the farm fresh food? That's yes, that's website? our farm okay. fresh food program. That's what we call our sustainable agriculture program. Okay, so that and that is focused on restaurants. There are individuals involved with that. We program? what we do as far as individuals go is we have a source on our website where people can find out about community supported agriculture programs, mm -hmm. as well as well as where the farmers markets are in the area. Okay. So um, you know, it's we are trying to build community awareness around that. Yeah. 
Okay, and with with the um, with the bringing the new farmers in, yeah. are you uh, um, helping to just just train them? Are you hooking them up with existing farmers? How does that work? It's a mentorship program. Okay, yeah. So we work with existing farmers. They're on the farm. Um, we have anywhere from yeah. you know three full time to fourteen part time apprentices that work on the farms right now. Okay, and um, so it's a great learning experience. Right. Um, we have also started a food and farming entrepreneurship class with uh -huh. Clemson and Fast Track so that they get the business skills that they need. Nice. And then we're also working with Trident Tech to, um, to we did a sustainable agriculture class this last year and we're going to be doing a, um, developing a whole curriculum around sustainable agriculture with them. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And right bef before we turned on the, the video, you mentioned that you're doing some work on the a community, local community capital group. Yeah. Is that something you talk about now? Or? Sure, sure, okay. absolutely. Um, um, what we're doing is we're putting together a group of folks who want to see their investments stay within our own community. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to, um, to nurture, build up, support those types of businesses that we feel like are going to um, sort of be reflective of what we believe in in our organization. So there, are, it's that triple bottom line philosophy of people, right. planet, and profit, and um, and it's a way for people to invest. You know, instead of in Wall Street, in in Main Street. So it'll be sort of a micro loan program. Oh, wonderful! Yeah. Um, and you were talking about one of the local business stories. Do you have a, a favorite story or two from some of the local businesses you've worked with? Oh gosh, you know, I think the thing that sort of moves me the most mm -hmm. is the way it's sort of, I mean, without sounding you know terribly cheesy, it really is sort of a family of businesses that have, has been created. There's a lot of loyalty that's generated. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the women that um, that has worked really closely with us, who owns a local toy store, um, she developed a friendship with another business who owned a local children's clothing store, and she was this new business was uh, retail was something you know they hadn't experienced before, and so the woman who owns the toy store would go in and help her merchandise her product. Help her, you know, with pricing and do her window displays. Even sent the professional who did her window displays over to this woman's store to help her with her window displays. Oh, wow. So those are the kind of great connections that are being made that mm -hmm. really make this, like, you know, really worthwhile to me. You know, when I see that kind of... Brings the human element Absolutely. back in that was... It's the competition sort of being taken out mm -hmm. instead of we're stronger together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Jamie, any final thoughts for anybody viewing the blog or final um, comments about Low Country Local First? Well, um, if you don't know about us, I invite you to find out about us, to look at our website, to mm -hmm. learn a little bit more. And of course, you know, making that 10% shift isn't nearly as difficult as people might think it is. It's pretty easy. And when you think about, you know, the, the impact that can be made in our community, mm -hmm. both um, economically and environmentally by less transportation, mm -hmm. then um, I would encourage folks to do that. Wonderful. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Barry.